What? Hi folks, welcome back to Dungeons and Dry Brushing. Today, we're going to be painting up the Krampus miniature from Reaper Minis. Because if not now, when? Right? Nobody wants a Krampus in July. This is going to be a pretty simple paint job, starting with contrast and speed paints, and we're just going to layer up from there. I don't really know what I'd use this for, I have no particular intentions for it, but it's a fun miniature, and to be honest, pretty much every year, I think about running a Christmas one-shot D&D game, but, uh, as you know, Christmas is, for many of us, the busiest time of the year as well. So it just never comes together. But maybe someday. And if I do get there, I'll have the Krampus manager ready. Let's get started. Though I know many choose to paint the Krampus as a kind of beast, I wanted to go for more of a cold, demonic look. So I started his skin with runic gray speed paint. This is a blue-gray color that should make a great base for a more evil version of the Krampus. I just apply this in even coats on all of the skin, making sure to keep your brush moving and to wick away any excess if it starts pooling up anywhere that I don't like. It's alright too if you get a little bit on the other areas of the model, but try to avoid any of the furs on his skirt. If you do get some on there though, just make sure to touch it up with white after. To accentuate this more evil look, I'll be using Templar Black as the base coat for his fur. I really want something that's going to contrast with the bright, cheery Christmas colors we're going to use on all of his clothing. I apply this to the fur of his forearms and covering his legs and tail, as well as his hair and beard. To create the Krampus's disheveled Christmas finery, I'm starting with Blood Angels Red. This is a really bright, vivid red that's going to be a great place to start though we will be giving it a wash later, as well as a highlight. When applying contrast paint to these kinds of relatively flat surfaces, the secret really is to work quickly, to keep the brush moving, and to be quick in wiping up the excess paint. On this particular model, we also have to take care not to apply red to the furs on the skirt either. The next base coat is just a quick layer of Plague Bearer flesh over the sash on his chest. For the next step, I pick out the bundle of sticks in his hand and the horns on his head with skeleton horde. The sticks look great with just this simple paint job, but we will be doing a bit more to bring up the horns later. Oh dear, our next base coat is the poor, naughty little children that the Krampus has stuffed into his sack. I took Gulliman flesh and just went around and picking out the various hands and feet that are stuffed between the bars and the terrified little faces that are pressed up to them. If that doesn't put you in the Christmas spirit, I truly don't know what will. A few miscellaneous details get picked out with the sand golem speed paint next, mainly the ropes attached to his basket and the dolly at his hip, though for an extra splash of cheerful color against the somewhat grim Krampus model, I did add a splash of High Lord Blue to the doll's dress. After some debate, I decided to add Wildwood Brown contrast to paint his hooves. I just wanted a bit of detail on this, I didn't really want them to stand out. They're at the bottom of the model, there's nothing interesting going on there, so I just went with a dark brown. As I began to add snakebite leather contrast for the basket, I was honestly thinking that this was far too many different colors, and that this model was going to turn out pretty hideous. Uh, in all truth, I was already considering what else I could paint for this week's video, when this inevitably ended up looking like trash. But it, hang in there, I think it turns out just fine. The next few steps are pretty simple. 
the holly leaves on his back get some absolution green, and then I start to pick out the metallics. The cuffs around his wrists, the various jingle bells attached to his outfit, and the top of the, I guess, child abduction basket? These, these all get a coat of light bronze from Pro Pro. And of course, the holly berries get a tiny dot of bright red as well. Finally, our base coats are done. The next step is to give almost the entire model a wash in Targor Rage Shade. This is a warm purple-brown wash from Citadel that was presumably named after the sound a dog makes when it sneezes. Apply an even coat of this to the entire model except for the white base. The skin, the hair, the horns, even the red clothing all get a wash. Even the metallics and the white fur. I use this to make the, the fur look a bit grubby. After all, it's, it's the Krampus and we'll be bringing the white up again later. While that dries, I'm going to use Soul Blight Grey, whose name at least has a color in it, to cover the base of the model. Now, this is a light grey and will give a little dimension to the snowy base without drawing the focus to it. I'm going to use a bright red from Pearl Krill to highlight the red skirt now that the shade is dried. I'm just going to apply it lightly to the majority of the red areas, keeping it out of the shadows and away from the edges. Similarly, I'm going to use a bright white, the one I'm using is from AK, to overbrush all over the furs. I do this by keeping the brush relatively wet and just brushing across the tips of the texture without getting any paint in the recesses. This will bring the color up a bit while still keeping that kind of grubby dark look in the shadows. Next I work up the horns by dry brushing with a bit of drake tooth. While I have that out, I also use it to pick out his teeth and the whites of his eyes. I follow this up by taking Army Painter's Dungeon Grey and doing a careful dry brush over all of his fur and hair as well. At a last sinister touch to our Krampus, I take a bit of Zealot Yellow speed paint and dot it over the whites of his eyes gives him an intimidating glow that contrasts with the rest of the mini and draws attention to his face. All that's left is a quick coat of black around the base rim, and our Krampus is finished. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for our Krampus model. I gotta tell ya, I was uh, a little worried in the middle there. I know that pretty much all miniatures have an ugly phase that they go through, but I feel like this one was uh, pretty powerful and it lasted quite a while, but that's alright. In the end, I'm relatively happy with how it turned out. I like the contrast of the kind of demonic looking Krampus wrapped up in its gaudy and decaying Christmas finery. Very cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, um, please come back on Friday. We've got a massive Christmas craft video going out. It should be great. And I hope to see you then.